my dear students today i would be taking up a very important topic and that would be motor neuron diseases many questions are asked from neurology and this happens to be a hot topic favorite topic of the examiners as far as motor neuron diseases are concerned you have to remember that there are certain general features about the motor neuron diseases we will be taking up amyotrophic lateral sclerosis specifically but to have a brief recap of motor neuron diseases you have to remember that these are the group of disorders which are common in adults and very important fact is that we are aware of the important cells in the spinal cord the anterior horn cells there is degeneration of anterior horn cells of the spinal cord predominantly and in addition to that we can be having degeneration of the very important descending pathways very important motor pathways and especially among them is the corticospinal tract not only the anterior horn cells and the corticospinal tract but also the motor nuclei of the lower four cranial nerves or the last four cranial nerves which especially lie within the brain stem or the medulla so there is degeneration of anterior horn cells degeneration of the corticospinal tract the degeneration of the motor nuclei of the last four cranial nerves in addition to the degeneration of the corticobulbar tracts sometimes. Now classically these group of disorders in general present with motor weakness the sensory system is not involved at all usually and you have to remember that they follow a progressive course so progressive degeneration of the parts of the nervous system. Now there are five types of motor neuron diseases, number one being the progressive bulbar palsy, the second one being the progressive pseudobulbar palsy, the third one being the progressive spinal muscular atrophy and the fourth one being the primary lateral sclerosis. The most important and the last one is the amyotrophic lateral sclerosis. Now as far as amyotrophic lateral sclerosis is concerned, ALS, it is idiopathic degeneration of both the upper motor neurons as well as the lower motor neurons. The anterior horn cells and the corticospinal tract is involved in this disease as well. A very important fact is that there is the hyperreflexia and what does the patient present with? The patient presents with weakness of the muscles because of loss of innervation. So weakness of the muscles and in addition to that there is muscle wasting. So there can be performed muscle wasting along with the twitching of the muscles. So we have to remember muscle weakness, muscle wasting and sometimes twitching of the muscles. Now depending upon the group of muscles involved, in case the muscles of the tongue are involved, in case the muscles of the GIT are involved, in case the muscles of the respiratory tract are involved, we can be having dysphagia, dysarthria and respiratory weakness or respiratory insufficiency. So in addition to that you have to remember how do we arrive at a diagnosis of these disorders electromyography will show the evidence of muscle denervation but the motor conduction velocity will be decreased but the biopsy of the uh, muscle segments will show de denervation and creatinine kinase levels would be slightly elevated however CSF levels would be normal there will be nothing abnormal in CSF now in addition to that you have to remember in amyotrophic lateral sclerosis the ocular muscles are spared and classically there might be upper motor neuron lesion in lower limb and lower motor neuron lesion in upper limb. So reverse, a paradox. So these are some of the important facts about amyotrophic lateral sclerosis. Now how do we treat? Basically there are not enough drugs to treat ALS. It is a progressive degenerative neurological condition but one drug rilozole I would like to mention. The rilozole has got a role in decreasing glutamate release and glutamate is responsible for neuronal death and this decreased glutamate release decreases the neuronal death and it has been found to prolong survival by few years. In addition nowadays and sense oligonucleotides targeting SOD1 protein. SOD1 protein is implicated in pathogenesis of ALS and 
oligonucleotides which are antisense are targeting this protein they are under observation and hopefully we would be coming up with some more drugs for this lethal degenerative neurological condition i hope that this class of mine benefits you in understanding motor neuron disorders especially amyotrophic lateral sclerosis thanks a lot